Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about user snippets in VS Code. And now I'm a huge proponent of making your life easier at every stop of the way. So if there is something that you can turn into a snippet, I typically turn it into a snippet, even if it's very basic. Like how many times have you written out console.log? This little bit of code is something you have to type out all the time. Now, one thing I like to do is set up a user snippet just for the word log. I'm, I'm not sure why, but I've just gotten so used to typing log when I want to log something that it makes it really easy. So let's go ahead and actually add our very first user snippet in the process. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, some things you can do in snippets that are really nice and fancy. So the best way to get there is head to your menu bar. We can click the code and then we want to go to preferences and then user snippets. Now here, it's gonna ask you to select your language, which is important because the snippet is only going to work for that given language. It's not like a generic master file or something. We wanna be able to narrow these down very specifically. So this is a JavaScript React project. So I'm gonna select JavaScript React. And as you can see here, we just have open brackets, which is just essentially asking for an object, right? So what we want inside of this object is you can see by this example, well, we first will give this a title. So we can give this a title of console log. All right, this is the uh, just string title of what this is going to be. And the value for this property is going to simply just be another object. Now we have some things that we need here. We need a prefix, a body, and possibly a description. You do not need a description, but you can have one if you're having lots of different uh, different snippets and you want to keep track of them and maybe console log is not explicit enough for you. So first property inside of our new snippet is going to be the prefix. And if actually, if you notice that here, let me see if I can do that again. I hit the strings and it's actually saying body description and prefix. So uh, VS Code knows that you're doing a snippet here. And so it's giving you all three potential properties. Like I said, description is totally optional. So we can just hit prefix. And as you can see here, it already gives us a string. So it knows what type of value we're going to be looking for. And here we're just going to use the word log. And next we're going to have the body. Now the body is simply just going to be a string as well. Now you'll notice the example up top has an array. It's one of the reasons I'm not using the example up top. However, we will be talking about that in a second. And it says that we can have this property be a new array, but this can also just be a simple string. And you might be wondering why. The reason why this can be a string is if your snippet is one line long, for instance, a console log, we could say console.log. And inside of here, we can just have this. And you'll notice in the example above, they have some single quotes. Let's leave off the single quotes here and just do dollar sign one and then wrap it off with a semicolon. Okay, now let's head back to our uh, JS file and I can come in here, just give myself some space and I can just say log, I can hit tab and you'll notice it's now put my cursor directly into the console log so I can log anything. I could log this hello class and see the answer to that. Now, why would they have put those single quotes in there? If we were to actually have those single quotes like this, it's going to sort of assume that whatever our, our output is going to be, is going to be a string. So if we were to say log, and we wanna select the user snippet, I'm not quite sure this is referring to something else. We can just hit there. You can see that whatever we're giving this is automatically a string. Now I prefer to have the flexibility for myself, which is why I'd left off the single quotes like they had in this example. So as you can see here, a dollar sign one is basically indicating where in fact our cursor is going to end up after the snippet. And if we were to want to say, let's log two things, we could have a comma and then a dollar sign two. Okay, and this is going to allow us to do something fun where we can say log, make sure we have the snippet, and then we can say, hello, we want to output hello first. Now I'm gonna hit the escape key because if I were to hit tab right now, it's gonna to wanna to do something. So you'll notice I have no dialog box and I hit the tab key and it jumps immediately to the second cursor position where we could maybe just log view and see what the view object has in store for us. So as you can see here, if we were to hit tab again, 
it just gets out of this. So what's so cool about snippets? Well, they can save you a ton of time. For instance, I have a React uh, snippet for components that is built components the exact way I like to, using things like a static declaration for the uh, prop types and uh, default props, uh, using the class syntax, using pure components, stuff like that, using stuff you use all the time. So you can really customize your snippets into well, things that, that you do, right? Or maybe they're code that is used frequently in your project. For instance, I use Meteor a lot and there's a roles package. So to check a user's role, it's roles.user is in role. And then you have the user ID in whatever roles. Well, it's nice to be able to put that into a snippet and I can just say role tab and have that snippet in there without having to remember how to spell everything. Now remembering uh, exactly if it's user is in role or user is in roles because uh, one of those is going to cause the code not to work. So it's going to reduce errors, it's going to speed up your development, and it's going to make life easier. Now, what happens if we were to do two dollar signs, right? If we were to do two dollar sign number ones? What's going to happen here is we're going to have something very, very nice. So I'm going to do my last log here. I'm just going to say log. Make sure I have the snippet. And now when I start typing, you'll see we now have both of these typed at once. It gave us two cursors. Now, why might you want to do this? Well, let's go ahead and make another snippet here, and I'm going to show you maybe a good reason why. We could have a uh, functional stateless component. So functional stateless, okay. And now inside of here, I'm going to give this a prefix, which is just functional uh, SC, okay. And then the uh, body this time is not going to be a string like we had last time, but it's going to be an array. And why is this an array? Because we're going to have multiple lines of code. If you want this to be anything more than a one liner, you need an array and it's an array of strings, a string for each line. And the first string can just simply be import react from react. Okay. Just like that, we can have a comma. And now we want a blank line in here. So we can simply just do double quotes. We no need to do a space or anything. Next on the next line, we're going to have a constant variable is equal to dollar sign one, whichever the name is, is equal to, uh, then we just have an arrow function. Okay. And then a bracket. Now next line, no, I do not want to have a console there. Okay, next line, we can just simply close this off here. Uh, we can just have a return. Okay, and then this one I can have a dollar sign too, because why not, right? Uh, might as well make this easy and easier. And keep in mind, it's a little tough uh, writing this code out like this, right? And you'll see in a moment here some issues that I'm purposefully not addressing right now. But as you can see here, what we really just want to do is construct our code in a series of strings. So, okay, now I'm going to give this another space. And at the bottom of this file, I'm going to have this simply just to be export default. And then we're also going to use dollar sign one again. All right, this is where that dollar sign one is going to come in super handy and we can save this. So let's try out our FSC. We're gonna do so on a new file. I'm going to just say test.js and this already knows it's a React JavaScript file and we had functional stateless component which was our user snippet. We can hit enter or tab and you'll now notice when I have the new test component, I now have a constant variable test which is equal to a function and export default test. Now if I were to hit tab from this, it sends me right into my return statement where I can have, let's say a div, um, and Emmett is choosing not to work correctly. There we go. 
And we could type this in, hi, whatever, save this and let uh, ESLint take care of the rest. However, if I do command Z, let's go back to before I had typed in the word div and here, here, and here. Now, one thing you'll notice immediately about this is certain things look fine and certain things look not fine. It's one of the reasons why writing your snippet out in an actual JavaScript file before you're dropping it in as a series of strings is a good idea. For instance, uh, how many incorrect things can you spot in this? For instance, we don't have a semicolon after these parentheses. We do not have a semicolon after these lines. The indentation is wrong here. And these are kind of things that you're going to have to work out if you're writing a lot of snippets. So semicolon, semicolon, and don't get rid of that parenthesis, but semicolon. And we also want a tab in front of this return line. And how do you do a tab? Well, we actually just do it with, uh, backslash T. You'll see it's even a special color in our syntax highlighting, right? Because this is going to denote a tab. And if we wanted two of these, we would just have another backslash T. Okay, save this. Let's nuke this out and try it once again. F, uh, S, F, S, C, yes, F, S, C. And here, now this is looking a lot better. Just like that, we now have a functional stateless component that looks a little bit more like what we'd expect. And like I said, I'm making uh, user snippets constantly. And if you do not want to make user snippets constantly, if you want to have this already done for you, then the best place for that is the extensions market. If we type in React Snippet. Uh, you can just start even looking in here and you'll see we have some React Native ones, HTML snippets, Redux snippet. Browsing through these packages of various snippets can not only, you know, make your life easier by installing and using these snippets, but it also can make your life easier by seeing how other people have made their snippets. You can paw through these on GitHub and see exactly how they are and dive into maybe something cool that they're doing, or you can just maybe get ideas for things that you want maybe without having to have this entire package, right? And as you can see here, there is a whole ton of React, React Native, uh, Redux snippets, but um, most likely snippets for everything you're trying to do. So go uh, wild, start installing a bunch of snippets, use them as much as possible. They save your life. They make your code less buggy because you don't uh, miss extraneous little things. And they just help you out in all sorts of ways. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you would like to learn React Native, you may have seen a little bit of the code in this video. Head over to www.leveluptutorials.com forward slash store or just leveluptutorials.com. Head to the store in the navigation and check out React Native for everyone. It's a beginner series for React Native. You don't need React. You don't need React Native knowledge to do this series. It's basically enough to get you up and running with React Native and start exploring some of the cool stuff that you can do with native development. Also, I started a new podcast with Wes Boss called Syntax. So head over to syntax.fm and check that out. There's links to all of the major podcast players or just search for Syntax on your uh, podcast, whatever podcast you're listening to right now. Uh, I believe we're we're on trending in the Pocket Casts one, so you can look for it there as well. Either way, check out Syntax. We talk about React, we talk about CSS, all sorts of web development topics featuring me and Wes Boss. So Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.